Hello everyone, welcome to Brain Talk webinar. Brain Talk webinar is a platform for researchers, early stage, early stage researchers, to present their research works and share it with everybody around the world. <clears throat> uh, I'm Sajjad from University of Oslo, and uh, it's my pleasure to co-chair this uh, webinar with Moin Nagabi from Simura Research Lab and Gadiel Hajj from University of Oslo. Moin. Thank you, Sajad. Uh, today we have an interesting presentation. After the presentation, we will have a question and answer session and audiences can post their questions on the YouTube live stream. Uh, today's presentation is given by Shayan Dadman. Uh, Shayan Dadman received his bachelor's degree in software engineering from Azad University in 2017 and master's degree in computer science and geometric modeling from the Arctic University of Norway in 2020, where he's currently pursuing his PhD degree in artificial intelligence and the application of reinforcement learning and multi-agent systems for the algorithmic composition of music. From 2020 to 2021, he was a research assistant with the Department of Computer Science and Computational Engineering at UIT. His research interests include computational creativity, algorithmic composition of music, reinforcement learning, multi-agent systems, and human-computer interaction. Hello, Shayan. The floor is yours. We are looking forward to your presentation. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction and also invitation. Uh, I'm very happy to be here and presenting my work. So let me share my presentation. Yes, you can see my screen, right? Yes. Perfect. So in this presentation, I'm going to present uh, my work, my research, which is uh, on music generation with AI, specifically application of multi-agent systems. During this uh, presentation, we're first going to talk about the aspects of music generation tasks. Then we talk about deep learning methods for music generation, including their architectures, evaluation methods, and the challenges that, is in, that involve with these models, and also a possible potential approach to address and overcome these challenges, which includes the multi-agent systems. But before we talk about the multi-agent system for music generation, we also cover the multi-agent systems characteristics, attributes, and the architectures. So, the first uh, part is uh, aspects of music generation task. The objective of music generation task refers to the musical content to be generated. There are five aspects, uh, type, which defines the nature of the music generation model, that can be, which can be monophonic, polyphonic, single voice, accompaniment, or et cetera. The mode that defines whether the system is interactive or fully automated, a destination and use of the generated content, which determine based on the mode played by, by an audio system, processed by a sequencer, or performed by human. The style that defines where the generated content is influenced by the style of certain musicians such as Bach, or it is learned from the human interacting with the system. The music representation is uh, characterized by different levels of representation. The music generation can be addressed relative to each of these levels. Two main domains are a symbolic domain, which include discrete variables, and audio domain, which include continuous variables. Considering the multi-level and multi-low model characteristic of music representation, we can divide the music into high level, which can be score representation, uh, which is symbolic, middle level or performance control, which is symbolic again, and a bottom level, which is uh, waveforms or audio. In a symbolic domain, uh, we first talk about the score representation. A score representation is a symbolic expression that encodes musical features. It is mainly used by composers to communicate and record musical ideas. Some forms of a score representations are music notation, lead sheet, and the chord chart. 
This representation contains detailed structure information, such as tonality, chord, pitch, timing, and dynamics of the musical piece. It can also carry the specific nuances for each instrument. However, a score representation has a low versatility for deep learning models. And basically, this, this is as a result of, a, because we need an effort to require, an effort is required to adapt existing characteristic. And also processing the music score for computer programs is a challenging task. The performance control is basically refers to the protocol to how to we, how we represent the musical representation. Musical instrument digital interface or MIDI is an industry standard that uh, encodes the interpretation of music score. It contains musical instructions or event-based messages to produce audio. MIDI provides detailed information on the timing and dynamics of a musical piece, such as pitch, time shift, onset, and duration events for score nuances. In contrast to score representation, the sequence of events progresses over time in MIDI, and therefore we can preserve the pitch values of the notes. However, there is no explicit definition in MIDI for notes like quarter and eighths or res, and it is rather the note's duration, like if the note is present or absent. The structure information such as rhythm, phrase, and chord progression also are not apparent, but it is fairly possible to extract this information from MIDI in compared with a score representation. Piano roll is a common MIDI representation which depicts data control instead of audio signals. The audio domain, or basically the audio representation, mainly concentrates on acoustic characteristics of sound, such as timbre and texture. We can represent audio or music in a wave and a spectrogram format. The audio representation of music is rich in acoustic nuances and musical characteristics that are not obtainable in the symbolic domain. Waveform is one-dimensional representation as a function of time on the horizontal axis and the extent of vibration or amplitude on a vertical axis. We can see the waveform representation on the right-hand side, the figure above, and the spectrogram is a two-dimensional representation with a speed of vibration or frequency on a horizontal axis and the amplitude on a vertical axis that we can see on the figure below. So considering the musical task that we described so far and also the representation of music, we can use deep learning models to process and generate music. In our latest publication, uh, we overview the state of the art in uh, symbolic music generation using deep learning models. In this publication, we mainly concentrate on these models and categorize them based on the architecture and we address the shortcomings and challenges involved with this model. And as we can see, we provide a table which uh, summarizes the architecture and features of these models and which challenge, which musical music generation task uh, these models are addressing. So we're first going to talk about the methods and architectures that are commonly used uh, to address music generation using deep learning. These architectures include recurrent neural networks, generative adversarial networks, variational autoencoders, reinforcement learning, and transformers. Recurrent neural networks are a neural network architecture suitable for learning the sequence of data. They can capture the time dependencies between input sequences by sampling from the neuron's output and feeding in the sample as input in the next time step. LSTM is an advanced type of RNN that compromises layers of neurons with recurrent connections. It contains a computational unit called a memory cell or a memory block consisting of weights and gates connected recurrently. LSTM can control the flow of information and uh, detail for each cell resulting in faster convergence and better learning outcome. VAE is an uh, autoencoder with uh, constraints on encoded representation or Latin variables denoted by a variable Z. 
The applied constraints ensure that the encoder produces latent variables with a predefined structure and properties. VAEs have shown an excellent capacity to produce various high quality content such as images, text, and sounds. The training regime in AE in autoencoders results in encoding and decoding with no information loss, which causes latent space irregularity issue. The VAE's architecture alleviates the latent space irregularity issue by encoding the examples following a probability distribution, PZ, like a Gaussian distribution. In this manner, VAEs ensure a better structure of latent space by forcing the encoder to return a distribution over the latent space instead of a single point. The GAN's architecture or generative adversarial networks architecture includes a generator G and a discriminator D. The generator learns the distribution of the input data during the training process to resemble the actual samples. The discriminator takes the examples of the real or input examples and generated data, the output examples, by the generator. The training process of GAM forms a two-player min-max game in which the models are trained until the discriminator is fooled half of the time. Indeed, the discriminator during, it, uh, during a training attempts to maximize the probability of assigning the correct label to real and synthetic or generated data by the, gen by the generator G. <coughs> the next model is transformer. The next architecture is uh, transformers. Transformers architecture relies on an attention mechanism that can use a representation of its input and output by concentrating on some specific elements of the input sequences. Transformers have been used widely in natural language processing and computer vision tasks. The architecture includes an encoder and decoder, similar to AE models or autoencoder models, and backpropagation-based learning, such as reinforced, like, such as uh, recurrent neural networks and LSTM. The transformers are belong to the family of sequence-to-sequence -sequence models. The given inputs are prepared as the tokens to train the transformer model, which is a structured representation. And in this manner, the transformers can preserve the position of information and learn temporal dependencies within the input sequences. The next architecture is a reinforcement learning. In reinforcement learning, an agent learns to interact with the environment through trial and error. The agent selects and performs action sequentially within the environment. Each action takes the agents into a new state where the agent receives a reward. The given reward relies on the fitness of the action to the current state environment. The agent's goal is to learn an optimal policy to maximize its cumulative rewards or gain through the learning process. So now that we know the deep learning methods and uh, that we can use them for music generation, it's also important to know how we can evaluate these methods in order to make them able to learn the musical tasks. There are diverse methods to evaluate the deep learning models for music generation. And depending on the model's output, the evaluation method can be objective or subjective. We first begin with the objective evaluation. These metrics do not contain music uh, domain knowledge. They mainly consider the statistical distribution of the generated samples or classification accuracy. The objective evaluation measures the model's performance using uh, numerical metrics uh, like loss and perplexity during a training process. Loss indicates the difference between the inputs and outputs from a mathematical per per perspective, while perplexity evaluates the model's generalization capability. Court classification, style classification are examples of the classification metrics. Besides, there are evaluation methods to assess specific musical aspects, such as like, repetitive patterns, originality of the piece to avoid plagiarism, style similarity, and tonality assessment. On the other hand, the subjective methods evaluate the model-generated content in terms of creativity and novelty. Subjective evaluation is important as a musical piece consists of uh, perceptual qualities that numerical metrics cannot measure. The listening test or Turing test is a standard method for subjective evaluation. 
the human listener tries to differentiate the machine generated from the human created piece. Another method is a visual analysis that is conducted by a human expert. The methods in a visual analysis utilize visual representations like uh, waveforms and spectrograms instead of the auditory, uh, auditory form of music. As we talked about these structures and evaluation metrics, uh, there are many challenges involved with deep learning models because as we know, all of these models with the different architectures, they are able to handle uh, the music generation task in some extent, but they are lacking some, uh, some abilities to address these problems. These challenges involve the structure that these models uh, have a hard time in order to understand the global uh, structure of music. The closure, which is related to how the music will end after they start the composition. The creativity that refers to this point that these models are mostly able to imitate or replicate the training examples rather than understanding the musical concepts and providing a new insight or new examples that are unique. The style that usually, if you want these models to understand the specific style of music, all of the training examples should be at the same style. So it, it is very hard. These models have a hard time basically to understand or adopt this specific style of music by learning the diverse range of data at the same time. Furthermore, the interactivity is one of the issues with deep learning models as we know there are black box models so it's hard to understand what is happening inside these models and furthermore it's hard to navigate these models to obtain the output that we really like furthermore we have a representation issue in most of these models uh, the representation that has been used is either include pitch duration or velocity which is very simple form of music and does not really uh, cover the wide range of musical elements and characteristics of music. And finally, we have the evaluation technique, evaluation uh, challenge, which uh, refers to the uh, to how we are evaluating these deep learning models. As we talked, as we mentioned before, uh, it is very common to use numerical metrics, which are not referring to the domain domain knowledge and evaluating these models, which is not contributing to understanding of this model or the learning outcome of these modern models from the musical perspective. So in our paper, in our publication, we address these challenges and we furthermore point out the potential approach that we can address these shortcomings and how, how we can kind of improve this model's behavior. So before we get to the to the discussion and then show how we can do that, we first going to start to talk about multi-agent systems and what are multi-agent what multi-agent systems are and what are the characteristics of these uh, methods and concepts. So multi-agent systems are concurrent systems characterized by autonomy in making independent decisions. Uh, MAS is not a specific algorithm and in MAS we aim at the system's characteristics rather than its output known as hybridization. MAS architecture allow, allows the utilization of various, various uh, computational intelligence methods as agents and in this way it is possible to solve the complex task which we can process in a multiple levels. In a multi in a multi agent systems, the agents within MAS have their perception and action abilities, which enable them to communicate, coordinate, and cooperate. The MAS's autonomous, modular, and distributed architecture provides flexibility, robustness, and reliability. And in this way, we can reduce the costs of the agents. Uh, in compare with, with the centralized systems such as end to end deep learning models. The first attribute of the MAS uh, multi-agent system is the agent. We can define an agent as a flexible and autonomous entity, uh, which have a certain level of freedom to make decisions. We can differentiate an, uh, an agent from a controller by its uh, situatedness, which means the ability to interact with the environment, the autonomy, 
which is the ability to make decisions without external intervention. Inferential, the ability to utilize observations to work on abstract goal specification. Responsiveness, the ability to respond to the environment in a timely manner. Proactiveness, uh, which is the ability to improve its actions related to the system goal. And social behavior, which is the ability to learn, communicate, and cooperate with other agents. The next attribute of the multi-agent system is architecture and organization. The MAS architecture can be homogeneous, which means that all the agents share the same architecture and attributes, or it can be a heterogeneous, which means that the agents may have different abilities, structures, and functionalities. There are different approaches to organize agents, including uh, flat, hierarchical, holonic, coalition, teams, matrix, and congregation. The most basic uh, agent uh, organization is a flat. Uh, in a flat organization, we uh, all the agents are equal. There is no leader, and every agent communicates with his neighbor in a bidirectional flow. In a hierarchical architecture, the agent architecture is similar to the tree structure. Agents on different levels of the tree have different levels of freedom. The hierarchical organization can be formed as simple hierarchy, which means that single agent with the highest hierarchy level states on the top. And, or we can have a uniform hierarchy with multiple agents with a high authority. In a holonic uh, architecture, a holon appears as an agent that may be composed of multiple sub-agents. The sub-agents are bound together through commitments instead of predefined rules or hard constraints. Holons are layered in multiple layers. Agents can communicate between the same holon or other holons in the same layer, and an agent can be a member of more than one holon. The head agent in a holon is selected based on the resource availability, communication capability, and internal architecture. The leader selection in a homogeneous systems is uh, random for each holon, and in a heterogeneous system is based on the agent capability. The next architecture is a coalition. In coalition, the agents come together to form a group uh, for a short time. The agents try to achieve the performance goal by increasing the capability of each agent within the coalition. The agents uh, overlap among the coalition groups is allowed, which uh, helps to increase the common knowledge of the agents. The internal organization of coalition is typically flat, but we can use other architectures also. The team structure is similar to the coalition. However, the agents work together in a team structure to improve the group's performance instead of working individually. Teams can be formed in a small or large sizes. Large, large teams uh, are better at observing the environment and collecting more information, but they are slower at learning and incorporating the agent's experiences. The smaller teams, however, are faster at learning but they are limited in observations and uh, understanding the environment. The next two structures are matrix and congregation. In matrix organization, each agent is managed by at least two leaders. In a congregation organization, each agent from a congregation uh, try to achieve their goal that they cannot achieve alone. Each agent can be part of one congregation at a time. A congregation should have at least one member. So the next attribute of the multi-agent system is a communication. Communication. Uh, while we have an organization of agents and the agents can organize together to cooperate and achieve a certain goal, they also need to communicate with each other to, to basically form this organization. We can classify the information communication into message passing and also blackboard. The message passing is a direct message passing between the agents. The information flow is bidirectional and the information is not stored in anywhere. So whatever it passed between the agents, it just vanished. The blackboard communication, however, the agents share a data repository. The repository may contain structured data and control knowledge. The agents also can access the data repository through a control shell. So the, all the messages that pass between the agents will be stored in a one place that can be accessed. 
Agent uh, communication language provides a suitable interaction and information sharing protocol, which makes the agent able to communicate to each other. It provides a unique message format and ontology for all agents to communicate and interpret received messages. Two common approaches in ACL are procedural, that includes the agent's procedural orders, like how an agent performs a specific task, and declarative that consists of a uh, declarative statement that specify definitions, assumptions, etc. The statements in declarative uh, approach must be simple, short, precise, and expressive, enough to enclose the use of a wide variety of information. On the right hand side, we can see the ACL protocols, uh, procedure and declarative, and then the, the instances of these uh, protocols. The next attribute in MAS is a coordination. In order to have a stable multi-agent system and improve the efficiency, the agents need to communicate, coordinate, and synchronize their actions. The common approaches to coordinate the agents are central coordination, communication protocol, and belief model. In central coordination, we apply constraints to action choices by computing the equilibrium action point. It is common to use a Blackboard communication method to exchange information and also maintain this uh, message passing between the agents so they can use it as a history during their interaction. A communication protocol includes a series of task and resource allocation methods to coordinate the agents. Contract net protocol is an example of communication protocol that specifies a type and format of information and it involves the negotiating the negotiation between the agents. In this type of protocol, each agent accepts the role of manager or contractor. Manager divides a problem into sub-problems and finds a suitable contractor. And this uh, finding a contractor is through the bidding process. Also, the contractor can become a manager and decompose the sub-problem to increase efficiency. The coordination through protocols is efficient. However, it fails when the time when, when the time is time matters and we are like kind of we want to have a real time system. This problem appears mainly when the manager struggles to find a contractor as the agents with the potential to solve the sub problem reject the bidding as they want to kind of receive the higher bid or like uh, propose a higher bid. To alleviate this issue, we can use the belief model. In this approach, the agent can use the internal belief model to develop an awareness of the variations in the environment. The reference number two is an example of a belief model that combines evolutionary methods with neural networks and uses reinforcement learning to update the internal state of the agents. The next attribute and last attribute of the MAS is a learning. We can classify the agent's learning into active learning and reactive learning, and also learning based on the consequences. In active learning, the agent observes and analyzes the environment to evolve the internal mode, model or state. The agent can use various techniques such as deductive, that the agent uses the knowledge base for logical reasoning to explain a state action sequence, inductive that the agent learns by observing the state action sequence and underlines the general rules without the help of a reference mode and the probabilistic reasoning that the agent's internal state is updated based on the probability of the collected sample observation of an event and the likelihood of that event to occur in a reactive learning or the reactive learning is a process that updates the agent's internal state without knowing what needs to be learned or observed. This is similar to uh, how we perform the learning in a neural networks, which is a functional approximator. The next learning mode, the next learning method is a learning based on the consequences that uh, depends on evaluating the suitability of selected actions. This is similar to reinforcement learning and genetic algorithms that the agents learn by through trial and error and interacting by the environment. Some challenges that involve in MAS learning include the resource allocation for learning methods, because as we use the more complex uh, or sophisticated algorithms, these algorithms require higher uh, resources. And this just add up more complexity to the system and also pressure. Then the stochastic nature of environment 
which means that these agents may have a hard time to understand the dynamics of the environment and learning the optimal action. Furthermore, the change of MAS topology, when we change the multi-agents, uh, the agents topology, especially in a heterogeneous system, this change of topology may involve some uh, consequences, such as uh, understanding the agent's actions and also the, the dynamics of the environment. Furthermore, the inject of false information within the inf uh, environment and the scalability of learning methods that uh, also adds more barriers, as another uh, challenge to the multi-agent systems learning. So now that we are uh, familiar with the multi-agent system, so we are going to talk at how we can use the MAS for music generation. The MAS for music generation is concerned with characterizing the agent's behavior within the environment to, do, to model the music process. So in other words, the MAS is not, attempt, uh, is not attempting to solve the music generation task, but it's an approach to understand how we can put the deep learning models or various uh, music generation models, such as rule-based models or Markov-based models or deep learning-based models together to solve the music process, to model the music process. The MAS architecture uh, allows the use of different algorithms for designing musical agents, as we said, like a rule-based models or uh, deep learning models, we can assign the agent to various tasks that the agents can develop their own strategy to generate content. And they can communicate and cooperate to each other, with each other to satisfy the goal of the system. Indeed, we aim at the process of music creation in a way that we uh, introduce a modularity to the, to the system so that we have like a multiple models that are working together. The interactivity that we can involve the human user within this model to interact with these models and navigate the outcome of the system towards the desired preference and adaptability in the way that we make this system more adaptable or learnable uh, by learning the human user preferences in order to generate the music. And furthermore, by utilizing the reinforcement learning algorithm, we can utilize multiple agents that are working together in a flexible manner that they can learn based on interacting with the environment. This represents a cooperative and communicative environment that the agents help each other to achieve the final goal of the system. And furthermore, we can, uh, we can split the bigger problems into the smaller problems, which is known as the distributed problem solving, and assign it to the multiple agents to work together in order to solve the problem and reduce the cost of the system. So as an example, in here we have a schematic of the possible MAS for music creation. The system works with symbolic representation of music and MIDI and waveforms. It receives the input from the user. It performs music analysis and automatic feature extraction, and it forms an up and updates the musical knowledge database based on the given inputs. The system incorporates uh, musical knowledge, memory to generate musical samples during the performance. It can generate new pieces by utilizing various deep learning models and the human user is considered as an agent in this system. And through the interaction, the user provides feedback regarding generated samples, defines and adjusts the system's parameters and goals, or partakes in a role of sound synthesis. The system outputs both uh, audio and MIDI files, so it, it will be flexible for the compos composers and musicians to work with the system. <laughs> However, the MAS for music generation involves many challenges. The agent organization, which is the first challenge, refers to coordinating the output of uh, these agents to produce a coherent and meaningful musical composition. This coordination can be particularly difficult since each agent may have its own set of rules and objective, objectives. Besides, they may operate at a different level of abstraction and temporal scale. We can address this challenge by utilizing hierarchical coordination mechanism with higher level agents responsible for integrating the output of lower level agents. 
As a result, we need to also incorporate a suitable communication protocol, which is the next challenge. The negotiation protocols involve agents communicating and bargaining with each other to reach a consensus on the final composition. In this manner, agents can share musical concepts, involve uh, establishing a common language or ontology for representing musical knowledge and facilitating communicating communication between agents. And therefore, MAS must deal with uh, higher complexity, which is a uh, complexity of coordinating multiple agents to produce a musical coherent and aesthetically pleasing composition. Consequently, in such system that we have a high complexity, the environment is highly stochastic. Indeed, this interaction between the agent give rise to emergent properties that are not present in individual agents. This emergent complexity can make it difficult to predict the behavior of the system and can lead to unexpected musical outcomes, which is also referred to the learning challenge within the multi-agent systems. On the other hand, we like to interact with the system in real time or close to real time while allowing the, for interactive feedback from human user. We can address this by utilizing, uh, for instance, reactive architectures, which involve organizing agents in a way that allows for fast and reactive behavior in response to user input. And finally, the computational cost uh, challenge in MAS for music generation requires balancing the need for generating high quality music with the need for keeping the computational cost of the system within feasible limits. This involves addressing issues related to the algorithmic complexity, parallelization, and optimization. Indeed, it requires the development of techniques for different and effective music, gener music generation. So I hope that uh, this lecture was useful and uh, you liked it. And if you have any questions, uh, I'm here to answer. Yeah, thank you for the presentation. Uh, actually, this is like a new topic for me, so I have a lot of questions. Perfect. I will start with a few, and then uh, the others have also some questions. So one thing like earlier in your presentation, you talked about like the type of cooperation between agents is inferential, and you said that they will work together on some abstract goals or something. Yes. Uh, could you say a bit on these abstract goals, like what do you mean by abstract goals in this context? Like what is it that they coordinate on in, this, in a sense? And so basically like by abstract goals, it means that we give them some uh, task. Like let's say in a musical music composition, we say, okay, we would like to have a melodies. We would like to generate melodies. And then what the, the thing is like, uh, when we want to create a melody, we have so many different uh, styles of like uh, composition. So then we can st uh, split this or we can break down this problem into the sub problem. Like let's say we can have one agent that works only with jazz, another agent just working with the blues music, and another agent work with the honor another genre. And in this way, these agents start to interacting with each other. So when the music, when the human user uh, give input to the system and identify the output to be a, a fusion uh, output jazz and blues, then these two agents are sort of cooperating with each other. And through interaction with the human user, they understand what is the preference of the human user because they generate some output and the human user gives them some reward or some feedback based on that output. And this feedback can be either thumbs up, thumbs down, or it can be mm -hmm. new inputs as a short like a sequence of a melody, a sequence of notes as a melody. Yeah, I see that. That's interesting. Um, one question about the the way, like the different ways you um, group the different agents, teams and coalition, is the difference between these two that teams are like more fixed, but coalitions are more like dynamic and they change between iterations or is that yes. not the case? Yes, exactly. So in a team, in a team architecture, you have the agents that they are working together as defined as a team. But in a coalition, you have the individual agents that form a coalition when they need it. So they are not relatively a group or a team, but they come together when they have a need to come together. 
So in this way, it's it's sort of a, it's sort of a, a way to control the computational cost because in a teams you have to have more you have more computation because you have to dedicate you have multiple agents that are active at the same time. But in a coalition, mm-hmm. you can have individual agents, and these agents can form a team to kind of solve one task, and then they can again get back to their state, which could be like a just a state of like a relaxing or like a state of doing nothing. Like I'm being idle. Right? Exactly, exactly. Being yeah. Idle. yeah, and uh, one last question for him, one of the other questions. Uh, related to this communication protocol, mm-hmm. uh, you mentioned a bidding process. I'm not familiar with like bidding process. Can you just like say a few words about that? Sorry, can you repeat again? A bid- yeah, bidding process. Bidding process, yeah. Yeah, and the communication protocol that you talked about. Could you kind of say a few words about that? Yeah, yeah. In, in this communication protocol, which is a contract net, uh, you have like a one agent, which is a manager, and you have a one agent that is a contractor. So the agent who is a manager, it proposes a task. And then it looks for the contractor to like to find out which of the agents within the system can solve this task. And then it, it's in a way it, to make a competition between the agents because the agents start to competing to get this task because it's it's valuable for them. They learn something from this task and also they can achieve something by solving this task. Mm-hmm. So in this in a protocol net contract uh, in a protocol net communication protocol, the manager propose something and then the agent started bidding and the agents who propose the best bid would take the uh, take the task and solve it. But the problem with the contract net is that sometimes agents become greedy because uh, mm-hmm. it's sort of a it's sort of a psychology and sociology because then they start to kind of being greedy and they start to bidding getting higher higher because they want to get the best value or best outcome out of what they are kind of uh, getting from this contract. Okay. But like, with these agents, would all these agents be like models that you train, or would be like, like this is something that I don't understand. Would the human being, like the human, be one of the agents, or are all these agents in this context like? So these models? agents can be, for instance, rule-based model that you define mm-hmm. some logic for them manually, or it mm-hmm. can be a neural network or reinforcement learning that they learn by interaction. So, or it could be zero shot learners that basically they just like don't have any knowledge, but they try to achieve the best. But uh, it's in a way because in a in a multi agent systems, as I mentioned, it's mainly concentrate on agents' behavior and how agents are basically interacting with each other. Because mm-hmm. in one of the learning processes, we have this. Uh, the agent can build up this belief model that they can understand how they can interact with each other. And depends on uh, all of these learning uh, learning uh, methods, the agents can kind of develop this attitude towards a task like a contract net, that they become greedy. Okay, I see. Yeah, thank you. I have a few questions, but I will uh, ask uh, Sajad or if you have any questions. Uh, thank you, Shayan. Uh, just one question from the, the page, uh, and it is uh, our audience is wondering when you have mentioned uh, uh, MES agents, uh, different types, for example, flat, hierarchical, or holonic, or coalitions, uh, which type of them have you used in your model? Have you combined them, or you have used just one of them? At current, currently, I'm just using the flat architecture because uh, in a model that I'm working on in my research, we are working with the, it's a it's a work in a progress. So we don't really we are not really looking for uh, the high with the most sophisticated algorithms. So we started with the flat structure that uh, it represents a very simple form of communication, a message passing between the agents. But it is possible to use other type of communication for sure. It's just that it introduced more complexity. And uh, we, we have a plan to start to work on it and further. But at the, at the moment, we are working in a flat structure. Yeah. Uh, another question that is posted in the page is, uh, again, I remember you have mentioned challenges in using deep learning for example, interactivity, interactivity styles. And then back to the slide that you were presenting about the uh, 
improvements after, after using MES for uh, music generation. Uh, uh, it is asked, uh, uh, first of all, uh, he wanted to know what you mean by style in challenges that you have mentioned about deep learning. The second is mm -hmm. uh, how you address this, this is improvement. Is it because of what he means, why it is improved by using MAS? Yeah. Um, I didn't say that it improved what MAS, but I said that we can, uh, we propose a potential approach that it can be improved by the MAS, that, like that the MAS uh, architecture or this method can help the music generation task to be improved. And it had been used before in a field uh, for the style question. Is that the style we're referring to basically the style of the different musicians or the different musical styles? Because we know that like a certain musician has their own specific style, and sometimes it's a desire to kind of generate music based on those styles, or kind of to understand like if we combine two or uh, multiple musician styles together, what would be the outcome? Mm -hmm. It's like more like uh, understanding the creativity and innovation part of the music. So, and also at the same time, not just like replicating or imitating the style of one musician, but uh, one specific musician from the training data, but also having a system that is more adaptable to specific uh, or to individuals, like a human user. Mm -hmm. So when you have a system that can be interactive, that is interactive and adaptable, it can learn the style of the human user by interacting with the user. And with the style, we basically refer to uh, that challenge or that problem that the deep learning models are kind of having a hard time to understand your struggle with that. Thank you, Shai. Thank you. Um, thank you so much for the presentation. I have uh, one question. Yeah. Um, so can you reflect a bit more on the implementation in terms of like uh, some tools or some libraries that are out there for someone who wants to like kickstart uh, um, working on a, on a multi-agent system. Can you uh, give some information in that regard? Yeah, sure. You can, uh, for a Python, there are, there are multiple, uh, there are multiple basically approaches to implement the multiple, the multi-agent systems in using different languages. I can share a reference that basically they have surveyed the, all of the available multi-agent uh, system platforms that you can basically implement the multi-agent systems. But it's more or less depends on how you are programming the, uh, the system in a way to the agents communicate with each other. It's like how you, how you are going to share the information between the agents using these methods for implementation. And uh, you can use it with the Python. There are some uh, frameworks available that uh, provide API to implementing it. And also, I think in the deep learning uh, wise, you can use also TensorFlow because they provide some uh, framework like uh, TF agents to implement the multi-agent systems that they can interact and work together. Great. Thank you so uh much. We are left with some more minutes. If Gadi, you have more questions, you can continue. Uh, yeah, I, I had one question. Um, so you mentioned transformers as being like one potential uh, architecture to use. Um, I would imagine that if you use multiple agents as transformers, then that would be like extremely computationally expensive exactly right so like do you usually use multiple transformers or do you like use a mix of different architectures or do you use like three really small transformers in a way just like to try to compensate is that like a thing that people consider well in our approach we mainly use the reinforcement learning algorithms because the reinforcement learning algorithms they are able to interact with the environment and learn from the from the user, from the human user, because our main objective is to uh, introduce a system that is more adaptable and more interactive in a way that it can learn from the human uh, feedback and then improve itself and adapt itself to the preferences of the user. 
But the problem with the transformers is that these models, first, they are computationally heavy, and second, they need a lot of data. So they are not really suitable for reinforcement learning approaches because then it, then it demands a lot of computational resources, as you mentioned. So as I said, we use the reinforcement learning like a DQN. You could also use double DQN or DDPG, depending on the task. And also you can use a Q-learning in some tasks and also reinforce algorithm. Yeah, I see. Uh, thanks. Uh, yeah, if we don't have any further questions, uh, we, thank, we can uh, thank our presenter. And uh, thank you to my colleagues for uh, sharing this uh, session. And uh, yeah, see oh, you on the you. next one.